is, is on sixth place. And they're not it's not set in stone, but it's a good start. Absolutely sprinting it to that sixth place spot, potentially. We do have the highlights ready from this match. So let's hop into this one. It started off with Peanut absolutely just getting... This was pretty one-sided in the yeah. jungle, right? It was not looking good. But at the end of the day, he came back and he made the most of it. So props to Peanut for uh, being able to do that. I actually think Peanut's impact in like team fights and the amount of like damage he was able to do was um, was was pretty disgusting, right? Especially, I think Graves is pretty hard to play into this composition. I actually don't think it's it's super easy to to get a lot of work done. And Peanut was definitely able to not only come back from what was it, as you said, truly hard early game, uh, but also able to not tilt and then skill really nicely into the mid to late game. Whereas for Afrika, I feel like you can see it in these highlights as well. It's a team where I, if they're more consistent, and this is something that's easier said than done. He didn't have equalizer, by the way. Yeah. Not, not to interrupt. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out, because that was my question, right? Because I feel like if he did have it, like 100%, you use it when the Magnet Storm comes in. Yeah. Might have been like a split second call where uh, Lance like, I'm going in, and then uh, Keen's like, oh, no, just, <laughs> just wait like two more seconds. seconds. Yeah, exactly. But my main takeaway for Afrika is that, specifically on the top side, I think that Keen uh, has had a kind of an arc where when he's looked great, he's looked amazing. Uh, when he's looked rough, it's been not amazing, but like I don't think it's been absolutely terrible. And the same goes for Dread, where these mid-game moments, like you just put your question marks at it, but then simultaneously, as this is uh, yeah, this is where Peanut's redemption arc comes in. He's like, you know, doing the cool anime thing of uh, you beat me earlier, now I beat you, and every yeah. one of your friends. Um, and then still, like, Afrika being this far forward and trying to kind of work with this fight is uh, just kind of, I don't, I don't, yeah. you can't get away with it. But in the context of knowing we need to win this game, it makes sense, right? Like, as Afrika, yes, this looks desperate, but guess what? They are desperate. Yeah. This, this, is, <laughs> this is their play of dreams, Sweet unfortunately, yeah. falling away. You, uh, you get desperate, sometimes you make... Desperate risky plays that could be the game at times. Uh, we're gonna listen in here. I wanna see this damage on the duck top. He just did a huge jump from fly, actually. But it was it was too little too late at that point. And coming into this game, I posed the question. Uh, is the outscale is the damage from fly? Ooh, by the way, I'm pretty sure you, you won't go back. It was very close to 307. Yeah. Imagine if it was actually 307. It would have been really good. Uh, but the main main takeaway from this is that the Vigar, you know, uh, we've got a little fun with it. I, I don't think any other pick would have necessarily changed the lot here. I think that this is just a straight up like team game how the teams are playing right now. Um, but you do see the problem with, with the Vega is that yes, you get a free lane instead of Seraphine, and those health bars did not go down through an equalizer, Valdez. That, that's the champion. That's what Rumble does. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think we have the answer. Is it worth it? And uh, no, because Seraphine is arguably one of the hardest <laughs> game carries, um, and it's not in terms of damage, but it's definitely in terms of how hard it gets for you to win the game.